Ted Kroll here. It is my pleasure to present a brief introduction to the original version of The Manchurian Candidate made in 1962. The film captures the exuberance of the early 1960s when the Kennedys were in the White House, the Cold War was going full bore, and there was a hangover from McCarthyism and the Korean War. At the same time, it portrays some of the darker undertow of the period. The premiere of the picture had the misfortune to occur during the Missile Cupin crisis, and with the assassination of Kennedy a year later, the film was pushed aside until it was successfully revived in the 1980s. It is considered a masterpiece and was selected to the Library of Congress National Registry of Films in 1994. There is so much richness in this film that I can only cover a small part of what it contains. The movie is a marvelous mixture of film genres. A bit of a war movie, some political satire, a dollop of romance, a karate fight that comes out of nowhere, plus a full-blown sequence of surrealism. Typically, it is tap, it's classified as a gripping thriller, which it is. However, fundamentally, it is a tragedy. The story of a broken man who has had his soul stolen from him. Frank Sinatra has a lead role and is perhaps his finest movie performance. He remains completely in character with none of his usual bravado or arrogance. His personal enthusiasm for the project paved the way for the film to be created. Lawrence Harvey plays Raymond Shaw, the character is at the center of the drama. Little remembered today, he died young in 1973. Harvey was a cool British actor, and he is absolutely brilliant in this film. Janet Lee was at the height of her career when this film was made. She saves the Frank Sinatra character and serves primarily as a kind, supportive woman who is a counterpoint to the monster of a mother played by Angela Lansbury. Lansbury's role is one of the best known as a totally evil woman this in all of cinema. She plays Raymond Shaw's mother convincingly, even though Lansbury was only three years older than Harvey at the time. The original idea for the film came from the novel by Richard Condon. His book is a cynical political satire. All of the outlandish black humor comes from him. Here is a shot of the alcoholic buffoon who stands in for McCarthy, dressed as Lincoln, doing the limbo. Remember the limbo? That dates you if it does. The screenplay by George Axelrod is near perfect. He took the bare bones of the novel and then turned it into a fast-paced drama with contrasting moods, often with understated humor, keeping the viewer constantly off balance. There are also long scenes where the dialogue doesn't make logical verbal sense, but the emotional undercurrent is expressed clearly. Most importantly, Axelrod turned a bitter, cynical novel into a deeply felt study of human tragedy. The score by David Amrine expresses that delicate, melancholy mood that is fundamental to the tragic story that underlines the entire film. When the credits are over, bang, right into a Susan march. The viewer is jarred by the powerful contrast that constantly keeps one off kilter. The film was directed by John Frankenheimer, who made a string of fine films throughout the 60s. He oversaw the production of the film and allowed all the technicians and actors the free reign they needed to give their creative best. He created this amazing surrealistic dream sequence where a garden club meeting about hydrangeas inexplicably turns into a sadistic showcase of Chinese brainwashing. 
truly unnerving. Throughout the film, Frankenheimer intersperses large, loud set pieces such as a Korean whorehouse, a chaotic congressional hearing, a political convention, with long, quiet, single-shot scenes of dialogue. Yet, for all the razzmatazz of this film, at base it portrays the deeply felt tragedy of a broken man, masterfully played by Lawrence Harvey. He is heartbreaking, like few characters in all of cinema. Please join us for an online discussion where we can dig in deeper to all the complexities presented by this film. Thank you.